What's up guys, Shane here from Figure Tech 3D Printing and today we're going to talk about these TL smoothers and what they can do for your printer. Welcome back guys. I said we're going to dive into these. These are called TL smoothers and they are used to help even out the signal or the power that is going through your steppers. Now I'm not gonna get deep in the electronics of it because I don't understand all of it. All I know is that these pretty much have a very unique use in 3D printing and the main thing they're used for are for DRV8825 drivers. Now DRV8825 drivers are very noisy and when you look at them on a scope, when you see the power fluctuation through them, it is very stepped. It is not a nice fluid sine wave. It is very, very stepped as it goes through all of its steps. They're just, again, not smooth steps. Now, newer chips like TMC 2100s, 2208s, 2130s do a much better job of this. And even cheaper, more, you know, less feature rich chips like the A4988s, which come on almost every printer out there that comes, I mean, every stock printer out there comes with A4988 drivers. They perform better than DRV 8825s. 8825s, a lot of people use them for when you jump up to 32 steps and they're also integrated in a lot of the smoothie boards out there. These were printed on my D-Force Mini Delta 3D printer behind me. I put an MKS Base 1.4 smoothie board in there. It's the MKS Base means it is a, or the S Base, MKS S Base board means it is a smoothie based board. It means it uses smoothie firmware, which is different than Marlin. A lot different actually. It's a lot smarter than Marlin. It's easier to edit. But I think it's a little harder to dial in, at least for me. It probably is because I am so used to doing, Mar I've used Marlin for a year and a half. I've been using Smoothie for maybe two months now, as long as I've had the board and I've been playing with it. Now I noticed in some of my original prints, and I'm gonna have to show you pictures here because I no longer have the prints anymore. I noticed some serious artifacting on my prints. And it was like, as the printer was going along extruding plastic, everything was shaking. Everything was shaking, but the shakes were on the micromillimeter scale, but enough to give the surface a bumpy finish instead of a smooth finish. So I went into the smoothie group on Facebook, talking to everyone there, finding out what in the world is the problem. And one of the members, I believe it was Jamie, he actually had did a video explaining all about why we use these and what that's for. So I'm gonna link that up here. And I really, really think you guys should go look at that. If you wanna see the technical side of this, again, it is far beyond my comprehension on the level he's doing it. I mean, I understand it, but how he's able to do the testing. I just don't have the brain power to do that. So, and also I'm not gonna redo something that someone already did. So go ahead and watch that video if you're really curious on how these are going to affect everything. I'm gonna show you how it affected my printer and improve the quality, but you should go watch that to see the actual, you know, super geekiness of it. Great video, I applaud him for doing that, but please go check that out. So I have three different ones here because I've used two different TL smoothers. Okay, so here we have the stock configuration. So no smoother straight from the board to the motors printing a print. So we have this. Then here we have the four diode module, which are these ones that I got from Triangle Labs. Actually, they're all from Triangle Labs. But this one only has four diodes in there, which means when it filters through the power, it's only using four of them. That's okay, but not great, because this one right here is using eight diodes. Now everyone says eight diodes are more superior, more better. We're gonna find out, but at least let's take a look at what does it look like comparative to this. Let's check the stock versus the four diode version and see what it looks like. So here are the boards, they come together. Uh, actually, they came four together. I'm using one in the printer currently, but they use one, two, three, four diodes. And again, the eight ones use eight diodes. So instead of being four big ones, there are eight smaller ones in there. Very simple connections. As you can see here, it says we have P2 and P1. So P1 I had going to the actual board. So board to P1, went through the diodes, then it went out P2 into the actual motor and the motor drove the belt system. Again, very simple design and very easy to use. It's just literally plug one in and they come little jumpers, plug the other end in, you're good to go. And these are some of the jumpers that it comes with, just so you can kind of see. They're literally just the regular motor jumpers and the four pin, they plug right in, they're good to go. All right, so here's stock. So we have a Benchy, we have the vase, and we have this cube. Let's look at the cube first, because the cube does show some of the artifacting that I was telling you guys about. So I hope you will see this. So there is, you can see how that's not smooth and shiny. See all those ripples? That is the artifacting from the extruder. See all those lines? All those lines, that is all the steps. So 
as it goes through, it does all those little micro steps in there and it's not smooth at all. It does all those little steps. So you can see that on every part of the print. Well, that's a problem because we don't want that. And even just looking here, you can see that looks like just absolute crap. Just looking at that. It does top layers fine and the bottom layers generally come out okay. It's really just when it does these walls that you really see the difference. Now here is a Benchy using the stock and now you see this, the salmon skin. See that rippling going around? And how it keeps going? If it was ghosting, it would only be like four or five right along there, but it's not ghosting. It is the rippling from the salmon skin. See, it's on both sides as it goes down there. It's up in here. It's down on here. You see those swoops going through there. It is all over this thing. It's riddled. It is a good Benchy. It's a great Benchy, actually. But with those artifacts in this, on, this, on the uh, perimeters, it's not that great. And here you can see a lot of that, that stuttering right here and you can feel the roughness of it. It's slight, but you can still feel the roughness on it. And again, this is all stock. And the easiest way to see it is to look at the vase. So there is the salmon skull right there. So here is the oval right here and see how it perpetuates out and down the print. When you look at this, you're just like, holy cow, you can really see that on a vase. And you see it goes up the whole way until it gets to another one right here. And it goes and goes and goes till it gets to another one right here. So you can see there are issues with that. And it doesn't look all that great. So look at all those steppings. Now using vase mode, I didn't have that little shuddering that I had here on the cube. It's all mainly just the way that that salmon skid showed up. So I went ahead, threw on the four diode versions of the TL smoothers onto the printer, reprinted this exact same G code, exact same filament, just hit print and boom, it's gone. You can see some of the layer lines, but holy cow is this smooth. All in vase mode, so it's one continuous string all the way up. It's nice and shiny. It just looks great. All the way up to the top. So yeah, this just turned out great. I didn't do the benching that in this just because you can see the difference right then and there very easily. But let's look at the eight one now. All right, so here on the right is stock. Here on the left is the eight diode. There is a drastic difference in the two. And you can notice that. So you can see how much smoother these lines are here. And you can still see how choppy these ones are here. Now again, it's, it's can't notice all the time, but you really can tell on bigger prints. But this was just one simple way for me to try and show it as best I could on what it looks like. So you get much better extrusions with the eight diodes or even the four diode ones. And again, here again are benchies. So on the left, this is eight diode. And here we have stock. And looking at this one here, see there's no of that salmon skin going on right here around this, this edge. If you look at this one, see there's that, there's that edging in there. There's that pattern in there that you can see. So it is a very big difference in a lot of the prints. It just depends on what size you're printing. But here you can see how rough this one looks. All those, look at all those little artifacts in the light. Here in this one, there's none of that. It's not there at all. So you can really see the difference in that part. So looking here at the eight diode vase, there is a clear difference between stock and using a diode, but between the eight diode and the four diode, not much of a difference. I think the extrusion lines are a little bit smoother on here than they are using the four diode version. I can still feel a little bit more of the layer lines than I can with the blue. I understand it's a different color filament. People say they behave differently, but it's the same brand, the exact same G code. Uh, so I feel it's close enough to do this. And I wanted to be able to show off the different color just so I would remember uh, which one was which. But yeah, this is perfectly smooth walls using the eight diode version. So the whole point was just to show you my experience in using the TL smoothers on an MKS S-Base 1.4 board, which uses integrated DRV8825 drivers. Now those DRV8825 drivers are very commonly used in TiVo products. So the TiVo Black Widow, the TiVo Tornado, and the TiVo Little Monster all use these steppers, and a lot of people are correcting all of their artifacts by simply adding these. Now a set of these drivers cost about five bucks, 
for three or four of them, depending on who you buy it from and where you get it from. I'll put some links down below to different ones that the ones that I bought and a few others that I find. Let's see if there's any on like Amazon Prime. A lot of people like buying those just because it's quick to get. These all came from AliExpress, which took a month to get. I ordered these ones first. Found out that the eight drivers supposed to be better, so then I ordered the eights. In total, cost me 10 bucks for the two sets. This one was a four set, and the eight diode only came in a three set, which was fine. Again, so I am using the eight diode ones currently on that printer on the X, Y, and Z, and of these well, the four, there's only three here, I'm using one four diode driver for the extruder just to kind of help smooth that out a little bit. And I think it's doing a very, very good job. I mean, obviously this came out really well and I mean, it's a beautiful print and everything I've come off of it since then has just been great. And one last time, again, not everything in here might be correct. I might not have explained it properly, but please go check out Jamie's video I linked earlier. I'll put a link in the video description down below if you missed the card. Please go check out his video as he gives a great explanation. He shows the different motors, he puts tape on them so that you can see how inconsistent the steps are with the stock drivers and then throwing on a smoother, how much smoother they actually do move. It's a great video. So that's it guys, so that is my results using TL smoothers on the MKS S-Base board, which uses DRV8825 drivers. I hope you guys found this video useful. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, talk to me in the comments down below. If you want to support me, help fund projects like this, make sure you become a patron. Check out my link down below, donate a dollar more. I greatly appreciate it. If you want to support me without like, doing like a monthly through Patreon, I have a buy me a coffee down there, which goes towards buying different things for the channel. And I have some direct uh, tipping that you can do via Streamlabs. And if you want to do your daily shopping with some of my affiliate links down below, big list of them. Again, some of the links I will put down there will be affiliate links for the parts that I'm using in this video. So if you feel like supporting my channel, please go ahead and use those. I thank you guys for watching and until next time, happy printing.